I'm Matt Deller, I'm a Master of Wine. I passed the Master of Wine exams in 2016 and I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Tour Wines in the Napa Valley. When I was really starting out in wine, the, my heroes were all Masters of Wine. Francis Robinson, Michael Broadbent, Clive Coates, Serena Sutcliffe. Uh, so that that's what piqued my interest in the first place. And as I learned more about the Master of Wine program, I understood that it was about critical thinking and uh, it's very in depth. And I knew that it would teach me a lot of skills that I would find useful throughout my career. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if there was anything specific about New Zealand that, that made any difference to me. Um, you know, New Zealand, of course, now is a very dynamic uh, wine producing country. When I was starting out, it wasn't. It was, it was still in its infancy. Um, so most of my inspirations were from the UK and the US. But, uh, you know, I'm very proud of how the New Zealand industry has developed now. Well, the Master of Wine Theory exams cover viticulture, winemaking, quality, um, the business of wine, contemporary issues, so very directly relevant in terms of its syllabus. Um, the tasting exams are very driven towards understanding the influences on, on what, how wine tastes, from the winemaking to the climate to uh, the grape variety. So, um, and then the third part of the Master Wine exam is the research paper, which requires a lot of very in-depth analytical skills. Um, and so every aspect of the Master Wine exam has been super helpful for my, uh, for my career. Yeah, we're a small winery, um, very highly quality focus. But, uh, but we are a small business, so no two days look the same. Uh, today, here I am <laughs> shooting, <laughs> shooting an interview. I'm gonna have uh, lunch with a, um, with a highly valued uh, friend in the business, and then, um, uh, and then I'm heading off to talk to uh, the importers of proof tags. So there's no two days that, that really look the same. So proof tags are something that you can put on the capsule of your bottle to uh, ensure the, um, the authenticity of your wine. Um, we're at the very high end of Napa Valley um, quality and, and price, so we need to be protective of our brand and protective of our customers. They need to feel confident that when they buy Tor that it's definitely Tor. So for California wine right now, um, I can speak specifically to the Napa Valley. Um, the Napa Valley global market is challenging. Our, um, we're, we're very premium price point. Um, uh, and so um, it's really important to be very active in the market. Um, I would suggest that anyone entering the Hong Kong market visit once a year at least. Um, people. In, in, in any market want to see the vintner or they want to see someone um, from the winery. The exactly. Yeah. It's all about storytelling, it's all about getting the wines in front of people um, and once they try them and build that relationship then, then you know they're friends for life but you, you got to do that. Yeah, our price points are driven by our great prices. Um, so we work with the preeminent Grand Cru vineyards of Napa Valley, Beckstoff and Tokolon, Vine Hill Ranch, Tierra Roja, Chimarosa, uh, Melanson, so um, Hyde Vineyard for Chardonnay. Uh, these vineyards are phenomenal vineyards and uh, the, the great prices are extremely high. Um, so our, uh, our wine prices just need to reflect that cost of goods.
for, for us it's uh, 70, 20, 10. So 70 direct to consumer, 20 domestic wholesale, 10% export. The reason for that is because um, you know, we could sell everything that we make direct to consumer, but it's important for our wines to be seen in the best restaurants, um, be in the best wine shops and talked about uh, by the trade. Um, we find we um, have a hospitality program at Wheeler Farms and they do an amazing job of hosting people, but in order to funnel people to Wheeler Farms, most of them have heard about it from a sommelier at the French Laundry or um, a wine shop in Minnesota. So um, it's, it's really important that we have that little bit of trade to, to introduce people to the brand. The Master Wine Program and the Master Sommelier Program are, are very different. Uh, the Master Sommelier Program, of course, is designed for sommeliers, so it's it's in most cases probably the the most logical fit for sommeliers, and and there is a a very sort of graduated um, pathway through the the introduction certificate, advanced, and, and MS. Uh, the Master of Wine. Um, most people uh, who enter the Master Wine program have gone through the Wine and Spirit Education Trust levels. Uh, the different, I guess, the advantage of Wine and Spirit Education Trust and the and the Master Wine pathway is it's a little bit more analytical and a little bit broader in its in its approach. Um, a little bit more understanding the why behind behind things. Um, the Quartermaster Sommeliers, from my understanding of it, and, and I'm, I haven't done any of those courses, but I have a lot of friends who, who have, um, it's very much geared towards having a, a, a ready supply of knowledge to be able to share with people at the, at the table. Yeah. Um, so, uh, whereas the WCT Master of Wine, it's a little bit more, um, I, I, I think, in a table side situation, the kind of expounding that, that we tend to do <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't be super relevant, but it's great. I, I think it's great to do them both in tandem and a lot of people do. A friend of mine, James Tidwell, is a Master Sommelier and he's on the, on the Master Wine program and he, um, he really wants to um, develop his, uh, I guess, a, a, a very different wealth of knowledge um, that's perhaps a little bit more about the why things happen than the what. Yeah, so the the general trends are pretty prevalent. It's in the news right now that, that millennials aren't interested in in wine or they're, they're not consuming wine to the same level that previous generations did at the same age. Uh, so. Um, so the, I guess the two defining or, or, or the two contributing factors seem to be um, expendable income and that the wine uh, industry has not done a, 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 as good a job as the beer and spirits industries at attracting millennial consumers. Um, personally, I think that everyone eventually <laughs> falls in love with wine <laughs> but that might be a slightly biased um, concept that you know wine is not I, I can understand um, uh, at, a, at a younger age that the whole idea of cocktails and, and having a having a beer is, is highly appealing and they are far less expensive um, but over time you're your interests mellow a little bit, I think, and, and the the idea of drinking something that speaks of a of, of a place and a time and, and and the skill. Yeah, for us at Tor, everything boils down to those personal relationships and just giving people those experiences. Our hospitality experience is not, you know, standing in a tasting room. And, and um, with someone behind a bar, it's sitting down at a table with someone very knowledgeable about, about 
wine and the vineyards that we work with and, and who can share um, the, you know, the, how um, that very, very specific site can, uh, can create that very, very specific taste. And I think people get very excited about that. So European Union, um, although not a country as, as a whole, is the biggest market for California wine. Canada is, is number two. Um, firstly, why it's important is because this is where, you know, I, I believe in skating where the puck is going, not where it's been, uh, to use a hockey analogy. Um, it's a fast, rapidly growing market um, through, throughout Asia. Um, you know, China uh, is, as, as, a, as an overall consumer market outside of wine, um, has now surpassed US as the largest consumer market in the world. Um, wine will wine will follow. Um, so I see China um, surpassing the US as the biggest wine consumer market in the world. Um, so it's really important that we that we get in there early and we build those relationships um, yeah. and become a, a wine that people want and desire. Yeah, we make very little wine. Um, and as I said before, we could sell it all um, to our domestic uh, um, members, but uh, we do like to carve out a little bit for export markets. We're in Denmark, the UK, Switzerland, Canada, Japan, uh, Hong Kong, Thailand, Singapore, Cambodia, and South Korea. Um, and it's tiny little amounts of wine, but it's just really important if one of our members goes to Thailand, um, we want them to be able to go to the retail bar and, and buy a glass of our Oakville proprietary, um, which you can do today. Oh, I love, I love everything. I love its diversity. You know, there's, every, every day is different and I love, um, the most I love is to, um, is, is being involved with, uh, on the winemaking side and then showing those wines to people and seeing their reaction. So you are involved in the winemaking stuff? Uh, I get in the way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> we have, we have incredible, an incredible winemaker in Jeff Ains and uh, with, with uh, support from David Greger um, and they're brilliant. So, um, but I, I love to be involved in any way that I can. I'm probably not the best person to ask because I don't, I don't, I, I don't go to a restaurant and bring it, take out my phone and look up, look up wines myself. But it, there's so much information accessible. Um, it really is, it really is changing things. I think it's brilliant how you can enter a number on the Krug site and and learn all about, you know, everything about how that bottle of Krug was made. Um, that sort of level of transparency and availability of information, I think it's great because it's helping consumers engage with wine more. It's not just a drink, yeah. um, there's a story behind every wine and so it gives people access to those stories in, in their consuming environment. For us it's just about every little detail along the production process and how can we improve it. Um, one innovation that we've brought in this year, I, I, you know, you could call it an innovation. I don't, but um, you know, we did a we did a barrel selection with our Tierra Roja vineyard, um, and the uh, the barrels that we did not select for Tierra Roja will make an exceptional Oakville. Cabernet, nice. and but the main point is to select the barrels that are most expressive of Terra Roja vineyards, so that um, for our towards our overall overall goal of every wine that we make is the most beautiful expression of that particular site that we can make. Uh, 
Uh, so the wine I'm most excited about right now is actually the Tour of Melanson Vineyard Cabernet 2017. Uh, it's still in barrel, but it's a wine with incredible energy and um, freshness and verve. Um, it's, you know, Napa Cabernet is a powerful wine by definition, um, but this just has this balancing beauty and energy to it. My name is Matt Della, Master of Wine, and thank you for tuning into sommeliabusiness.com.